Biggest thing I think that I find that people have questions about is where the title came from. I had a uh, one of my one of my clients that I used to work with, her son, she hands him the book and they're all excited about it because they've known me for years and they want to know about the book. And she hands him the book and says, you know, Coach Sean just wrote this new book. It's called How Not to Play Tennis. He looks at her and he's like, Mom, really, I already know how not to play tennis. I obviously don't need that book. And I tried to explain that to somebody the other day. It started with a joke, actually. It started with my publisher joking around. We were putting some things together and he realized a lot of the content, he realized a lot of what I was talking about, everything that I discuss all the time, was pointing out that people are doing things wrong so often. People are taught wrong. One of the things I yell about, I'll get on my soapbox all the time and just yell, you know, I can't believe somebody else is teaching you this. How Not to Play Tennis is me focusing on the things that you're doing that I believe are incorrect, that you've been taught incorrectly, you've been working on these things for years, and I think you're going in the wrong direction. So I've picked out a few things that I think are the most important to start out with, at least at this point, and I've said, okay, these are the things you should not be doing, and then I help you fix them, is basically the point. One of the things I would like to think that I'm, good at, that I'm good at is learning how to be better at what I do. If I'm better at what I do, I can teach you better as a, as a player, I can write better books, I can give you better information, it can be quicker, it can be more efficient, it can be more concise, therefore it's cheaper. You're not paying $65 an hour for tennis lessons two, three times a week. I can give you a $9.49 book and hopefully give you a lot of the information that you would take hours and hours and hours to learn on the tennis court, hours at a time, where here it's, you do it in your own time and you can learn as much as, you, uh, as, much as you're interested in. The biggest issue that I've found it, from tennis coaches, tennis pros, tennis teaching professionals, we say the phrase, keep your eyes on the ball. We say it over and over and over again. Watch the ball. Keep your eyes on the ball. Never take your eyes off the ball. There's a major issue with that in the fact that um, it's wrong. It's incorrect. It's actually physically not possible. Golf pros, what do they say? Keep your eyes down. Keep your head still they teach you not to watch the ball. There's a photograph in the book of Roger Federer and it shows where his eyes are, what he's looking at after the ball is gone. And this is one of the things I'm all over my clients about all the time. Over and over and over again, watch the ball hit the racket. What I call optical tennis is what a guy called Damien LaFont, he is a PhD certified tennis coach and Damien has done a lot of research on visual effect, what you see when you play tennis. What LaFont talks about in his research is variable depth of focus, is tracking the ball in, tracking the ball out, what your eyes can physically follow, what we can optically handle as human beings. We can only do so much. You actually watch the ball in and you don't watch the ball out. You're physically gonna lose sight of the ball. It's scientific fact. We don't teach it, and I say we being tennis pros. It's not being taught. Federer does it, I think he's the best example that I've ever run into of somebody that does it. And I learned this, I watched some upper level juniors, I watched some players, and what you see in the slow motions is that you see players lose sight of the ball. Why aren't we teaching that to you? We're not gonna teach you to physically hit a ball the best way and actually watch it hit the racket. The worse you are, the more you use the frame of the racket, right? The entire concept is watch the ball hit the strings. You watch it in, you don't watch the ball out. That's something that I'm trying to bring mainstream with this. It's an easy concept to grasp, but most people, they've never heard it. They don't even know where to start with this. So I say watch the ball hit the racket. They go, I am, I am. That's why I threw in at the very beginning of the optical section, this progression along with the arrows, the, what I call the blue arrows shooting out of this guy's eyes, where you can see where his eyes are looking. And it's all blacked out, but it's based on his eyes are where they need to be. He's watching the ball in, he's watching the ball hit the racket, and he's still watching that point of contact where he hits the ball, the ball's gone, his eyes are still on contact. He's focused on keeping his head still, he's focused on his eyes on contact, 
and the ball's gone, and then he looks up and sees the ball. Go look, look up, find out where it went. I interviewed Stuart Sink, who won the 2009 British Open. You talk to a guy like Stuart, who he does this by default. No matter what, he does it. It's part of his technique. He doesn't have to think about it. It's not, it's not forefront in his mind. He does it. It's as simple as that. He hits the ball, leaves his eyes down, then he looks up. Tiger, Phil, all the guys right now that are that good at that level, they all do that. Watch Chipper Jones hit a baseball. Guess what? Same thing. Albert Pujols, you talk about the guys. My generation that I've watched be great at baseball, be great at golf, they do this. I've watched Federer from the beginning of his professional career to where I've been able to follow him. I've been able to follow the guys like Nadal that are playing currently at this time. And, and they do this. Federer does it the most consistent of anybody out there and I believe that's a lot of the reason why he's that good. The golfers, they do it no matter what. It's something they were taught from day one. It was beat over their heads. It was, you leave your eyes down. You watch the club hit the ball. In tennis, I, I don't hear that. I don't hear it at all. Talk to Ashley Ambrose as an example, and the whole concept, same thing. As a football player, right? You watch the ball into your hands, you leave your eyes there, then you can put it away and start running with it. We just don't teach that in tennis, and we need to. And that's the real main selling point of optical tennis, of that middle main section of the book, is the fact that you're going to lose sight of the ball. Optical tennis, it's no longer keep your eyes on the ball. What I'm trying to do with this is I want every tennis pro out there to know that. I want them to understand that they're saying it wrong, that we're teaching them wrong. Within optical, I also go into the process focus of the concept the mental focus as to how it keeps you focused. One of the big things tennis players deal with every time we play is staying focused. We get distracted. If I can just focus on watching the ball hit the racket, all of a sudden my brain's thinking about one thing and I'm not thinking about all those other things. It was one of the things Stuart Sink was joking about. He's like, hey look, we can only think about one thing at a time. And if we're thinking about the fan over there that was just heckling me, I'm not thinking about my five iron or my three wood. I'm not thinking about that, I'm thinking about the fan. And if I can't bring my brain back and I can't get myself into that process focus, I'm in trouble. So you can use optical tennis. With One of the phrases that I, uh, that I use is use focus to gain focus. What your tennis coach, what the guy that you work with on a daily basis or the girl, whoever it is, that's teaching you to play, that's helping you develop, when they say make sure you watch the ball, the biggest thing that people need to understand right now is that's not semantically accurate. Watch the ball hit the racket. Let it go. Leave your head still. Leave your eyes still. Focus on watching the ball hit the stick, which is the way I put it in the book. Watch the ball hit the stick. The concept is you have to physically have your eyes focused on what you're doing to make that happen. And that's the main thing that I'm selling in the book.